Hello, it's James Photographer. I'm going to talk about my experience um, shooting a wedding with the Sony A7 III um, and the Tamron 28 to 75 lens. But mainly about my transition, my experience from switching from DSLR to mirrorless on a very bright, sunny, hot wedding, which I did just over a week ago. So I hope this will help anyone that's thinking of switching to mirrorless from DSLR like I've done now. So I'm a little bit late in the game. The Sony's, this Sony A7 III has been out for, I think, three years now. Um, and I was gonna move over to Sony in 2019 or 2020 for all the weddings that I had booked. And then 2020 happened, so I held off. And then recently, London Camera Exchange, like Jessup's and um, Wex and all those sort of people, um, they were advertising that Sony are doing a 200 pound cashback from buying the Sony A7 III. Plus I got hundred pound knocked off for trading old DSLR, an old crop sensor Nikon D70. So I got 300 pound off buying this system. So I got it brand new. Um, so I hope this video will help anyone that's thinking of switching over to mirrorless from DSLR. So like I said, I'm really late in the game with this one. Loads and loads of people already have. And I've looked at loads of reviews and YouTube videos of everybody and seen the benefits of mirrorless. but. Um, I did it recently, so I'm just going to relay my experience of photographing a wedding with this. I had my Nikon with me as well, because I always have two cameras with me. And I'm going to say, is it worth it? So straight off the bat, hell yeah, <laughs> to go mirrorless. Oh my goodness, over a DSLR where you can't see the image and all that. And um, I love this camera. It took some getting used to. It really, really took some getting used to. Switching over from Nikon to this and all the buttons, it's smaller and everything as well. Um, I, I love it now, but at first I was like, oh, it's just a completely different animal um, compared to what I'm used to. But switching over to this camera system for weddings, absolutely, I, I knew it'd be good, but I had no idea how good until I was actually doing the wedding. It was quite a, a long day, it was a full day wedding. There was up to 30 guests, which were allowed now. It was blazing hot sun, hardly a cloud in the sky, lots of shadows, lots of hot spots, that kind of thing. Um, fast moving, everything, and straight to it. So if you don't wanna bother watching the rest of the video as to why I see this as a massive benefit, then I'll just say, yes, it's absolutely worth it. And what I've done is I've written down some um, notes as to my priorities the benefits of switching over to mirrorless and particularly the Sony, I think, uh, which I'll get into. Uh, and this applies to any mirrorless, Fuji, Olympus, Panasonic, that sort of thing. So my, I got the Sony a7 III. You may notice as well, I've got a kind of a, a grip on it. It's an Arca, Arcus K, whatever you call them, Swiss um, bracket for tripods. And there's another bit that goes there as well if I want to do portrait stuff. The reason I got this is I, it's just too small. My little finger was like flapping around. The grip is so small. <laughs> Whereas that gives it a bit of bulk. It was like 29 pound. It's called UU Rig. It's a rip off, but it's pretty good. And you can get to the battery door, no problem. Um, so yeah, and it just, it just, I can get my little finger on it and it just gives it a bit more oomph. And that logo is pretty cool actually. It makes it look super pro, even though it's like a knockoff. If I sweat a lot, it's crazy hot at the moment. It's like a heat wave in England and my living room's like a greenhouse. So, whew, yeah, so I'm gonna get into it. And I also bought the Tamron 28 to 75 F 2.8, which I'm used to shooting with, with the Nikons, the 24 to 70 range F 2.8. Um, so I'll get onto the lens afterwards. So the camera itself, that's what I had in one. And then on the other side, I had one of my Nikons. I've still got both of them but I had this set up on the other one with the 80 to 200 f 2.8, which I've done a video on, which I absolutely love, but I love this sort of compression look, the candid stuff you can get with this, but it's heavy, as you can see. Um, excuse me. But yeah, that's what I had in the other hand, and it makes you look awesome, doesn't it? It's like big and bulky. Anyway, right. So let's get to my reasons. So, oh my goodness, it's so hot. The, the transition to mirrorless, particularly this Sony, is it worth it over moving over to DSLR? I would say 
Absolutely, especially for weddings and events or anything fast moving, stuff where you haven't got time to you know, really set up the shot and get the perfect exposure, the perfect white banner. If you're doing quick fire stuff, like weddings are, you haven't got time to sit around with weddings, you've got to be fast. Um, is it worth it? Yes, it is. I already knew it would be. Like I said, I was gonna get it a couple of years ago before COVID came along, but then there was no point. Um, but I'm gonna go through my main reason. So there's lots of good positives, which really help, but there are three big ones, in my opinion, which I knew they would be handy, but I had no idea how handy or how ease of use they would be on a wedding day, especially a bright, sunny one. So I had this camera for a week before I did the wedding. I practiced, practiced, practiced relentlessly. I got my wife to walk around with the sun behind her in front of bright conditions, in shadows, at night um, when she was just doing random things like putting her makeup on or walking down the stairs or loading the dishwasher. I was just like, do, 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 practicing all the focusing lines. <laughs> and she was like, oh my goodness. Um, so I practiced loads. So that's one downside is that the menu system on this is really complicated, <laughs> but you can customize it to any way you want. I'll get onto that in a bit. And I've got some help for that as well. So the three big ones, here we go. All these other things I've got written down are very, very handy, but I can live without them. But the three big ones, uh, game changer, I know it's a cheesy word, but it really, really is coming from DSLR. So number one, seeing the exposure in real time. I can do that with my D750s by clicking it over to live view and then you, you can see it on the back of the screen and then you have to click it back. But trying to focus on that live view on a DSLR of my D750s is absolutely useless. So Canon's and that are a lot better for that sort of thing. But to, uh, with the mirrorless, whether it's the EVF or the viewfinder, you can see that exposure before you take it. Um, apparently the Sony a7 III has got the less lesser quality uh, screen and EVF, but for me it's absolutely fine. So I don't know what the A4s are like and the A9s obviously better, but they were good enough for me, more than sharp enough for what I need. Um, so to see that exposure before you take it. Now with my Nikons, I had my settings for weddings, like a minimum shutter speed of 250 of second, aperture priority and auto ISO, and I'd be juggling up and down the exposure compensation all day long, just looking at the plus and minuses, because you haven't got time to check the live view, and if you're outside, you can't see it anyway. But it was just a matter of trust, and I, I got kind of like muscle memory in habit. I knew exactly when it was really bright, or you see certain shadows or white hot spots on things, I knew what to do with the exposure compensation and I would just trust those Nikons and they did, they did absolutely fine. But I'd be battling with that all day and kind of guessing, not guessing, but trusting. And there's always that element of like, I hope they're okay. Cause you don't want to be during a wedding, like constantly checking the back of your camera. It doesn't look very professional. You don't want to do that in any kind of professional environment. Okay. Um, so it was a matter of trust with the Nikons. And then a couple of times, like say I was indoor and I put it to manual for whatever reason, and then sometimes I would forget and I'd go outside, I'd be shooting away at like one hundredth of a second. Say I was doing like the the rings or the, the shoes or something like that. And then I went outside and I'm at hundredth of a second. All the images would be blown out white. I did that a couple of times over the years. It's so annoying. Um, whereas with this, with any mirrorless system, you can see the exposure before you take it. So you can jiggle it up and down, however you wanna control control it. You can you know, expose for the blue sky, the green trees, the highlights. You can raise it up if you want that nice airy look. You know, say like a wedding dress, you want it to look bright and everything and airy in the sun. You can see it before you take it. And I've set the camera to where the preview doesn't come up automatically. I've switched that off, I've, I've customized one of the buttons there's one on the bottom, but I've customized this one to preview it. If I do want to double check, I can preview it and then you're off again. So the fact that you can see the image before you take it, whether on whatever screen, is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Kind of leads on to the second big one for me for weddings, especially the one I did Saturday. It was really bright and sunny. Same thing, seeing that exposure before you can see it, but on a really, really bright sunny day, like most cameras I presume, especially my Nikons, you can't see the screen, the back of the screen when it's really bright. 
you can't get a true rendition of what it's like because the sun is glaring and you have to go by the histogram like I was doing or just trust before. You can't, even if you preview the images, you can't see the back of the screen if it's really bright and sunny. But with an EVF on a mirrorless camera, you look through there, it cups your eye, blocks out the sun, you can see it perfectly. I knew that would be handy. I knew that would be a really big thing um, to use, but actually using it all day on a 12 hour wedding where most of it was in bright sunshine, I cannot tell you how <laughs> nice that was. It more than nice, amazing, like just game changing. You can block out the sun, you can see the exposure, and it's absolutely, ah, uh, I mean, I'm late in the game with the mirrorless sort of transition, but I had no idea. I, well, I kind of did. I had a Fuji years ago, the X-T2, but I found the autofocus wasn't good enough um, for weddings, for continuous tracking. But that, ah, uh, it's just, it's fantastic. It just takes that fear off you, where you have to wing it and just trust your settings, which you should be able to do anyway. But just takes that away you can see the exposure it blocks out the sun and you can see that glorious viewfinder fantastic so yeah the other sony's may have better viewfinders but that one's more than good enough for what i need and coming from a d750 is like fine so there there are two of them and then the last big one for me which is just insane is the eye autofocus tracking so I've got back button focusing. That's my normal focus, like I sort of had on my Nikons. And then this one I've set to eye autofocus. And that covers the whole frame, not just a bit in the middle, that covers the whole frame. That will dart around all over the place. So there's lots of good focus modes um, on the Sony. And I practice with them, but some of the sort of tracking, zone tracking and all that weird and wonderful stuff, I didn't 100% completely trust because I'm not used to it and I didn't have enough time before the wedding. So I stuck to what I'm used to, just a cluster of dots in the middle of the frame and I recompose, I focus with that. And I just know that as long as I hit that, it's good and it does focus very, very fast. But anything to do with people, you hit that eye autofocus and oh my goodness, <laughs> it's just, even in low light, even with the sun behind people, you know, to a limit, I practice with my wife with the sun setting right behind her head it still would lock onto the, her eye. You can see that green dot just appear on whichever eye is closest. Even if it's far away, it will lock onto the face. There'll be a green square around their face. And I'm talking quite far away. Now you may worry a bit about what if there's a group of people, is it just gonna dart around between people's eyes? No, but you, it does this really clever thing. You can see a gray box appear in front of everybody's face. And wherever you put your focus mode on, like I had the central focus dots, over that box and then hit eye autofocus, it will stay on that person. So the bride is the priority or whoever you're photographing, it will just stay on that person. And <laughs> I knew it'd be good fun. I didn't realize how useful it would be. Um, absolutely insane. Um, so much so it's kind of annoying because when you load the images onto Lightroom, they're all in focus. <laughs> and it's like, oh man, which ones do I get rid of? Because they're all in focus. Excuse me, I am sweltering here. So they're the three main ones, and if there was no other benefits to the Sony, I would still get it for those three reasons alone. To see that exposure, to be able to block out the sun with the EVF and see the exposure, and that insane eye autofocus, which I think Sony wins on, like judging by all the other reviews, no other camera can match um, that. And that's the A7 III, which has been around for three years. So what the other ones are like, I don't know. But for a full wedding, 12 hours, I had no issue with that focusing system at all, even in quite low light. <laughs> so um, brilliant. Right, so I'll get onto some of the other things, the other benefits. They're my three big ones. So I find it less intrusive. So going back to the live view at the back, because the focus system is on that as well, I don't have to keep doing this all the time and you can just hold it out. It can be less intrusive. And if you're against a tight wall or something, you can lean like that. And with the eye or focus, as soon as you've seen that green box, green box appear, it's great. And you can sort of look down and take shots. You can hold it high and take shots because you've got the tilty screen as well, which is handy. Um, like that. 
but I just find it less intrusive. You can just lean out, ding, get the shot. And if <laughs> if you press eye auto focus, you know you just you just know it's going to lock on to whatever your person you're pointing at, and that is really good. So for portrait like that and group shots, you don't have to be like staring in someone's face like a sniper. It, I find it a little less intrusive, so that's really good. Did I talk about this? I think I did. Yeah, just if, if I forgot to talk about this, I just found the grip wasn't good enough, so that just bumps it up a bit, 29 pound on Amazon. Right, what's next? Um, quiet, it's a lot quieter, even with the shutter on, than my DSLR. So I turned the electric front curtain off from a video I saw from a great photographer. Um, because with both shutter curtains on, it sounds like it's taking two pictures, it's like ching ching. Whereas if you turn the front one off, it's just ching, and it's a lot more quiet. It has got quiet shooting, but you're prone to banding with that. But I find this plenty quiet enough, and especially for the ceremony. So if I go close, it's quite dampened, um, and it's just the one click, which is nice. And when I shot with this one during the ceremony further back, this was like so noisy compared to this one. You can go quiet shooting and the A9s, you can do that without any banding and everything. But I've heard some feedback before that if someone is doing quiet shooting, the bride and groom are a little bit disconcerted. Like, is that guy actually taking, or is that person taking photos? Because you're like this. And they'll be like, is he taking photos? So this. I, th I think it's quite reassuring for the couple. Um, so what else? It's lighter, the camera's lighter. I got the Tamron lenses so I could fit my fingers in. Um, I've had a go with the G Master at the photography show and I could barely get my finger in, whereas the Tamron is nice and light. It's a lot lighter as well to lug around than a DSLR. <coughs> Certainly this setup. Uh, I'm gonna get onto that lens in a bit. The buffer, I've got SanDisk Extreme Pros. I've got two in there, it's another thing. It's got the two memory cards. I wouldn't shoot anything paid, certainly a wedding without two memory cards recording raw. And the buffer is fine for weddings. You've got all these different, you've got a fast frame rate. Let me go to that. You've got high, low, wait a minute. You've got low, high plus, high, mid and low and I think that's 10 frames a second, 8 frames, 5 frames and 3 frames. So if I go on high plus, <laughs> it sounds cool and you can see it shows you in both viewfinders. You can see the buffer like loading it up and you know it's ready. I wouldn't shoot that at a wedding and then you can go to just high which is 8. Doesn't sound much different and then medium which i have it on which is five frames a second that for weddings is more than enough i think and then you've got your low still right into memory card you can still take shots it doesn't seem to sort of run out and then low is this which is all right so that's what it sounds like so 10 frames a second is amazing oh i just turned it off whilst it's buffering um, the custom buttons, they're all over the camera, so that's really, really good. You've got custom buttons everywhere on the top and you can just assign anything. The menu system is complicated, but you can just assign all the custom buttons and the dial and the buttons, the delete button, everything to whatever you want. Um, these two up here are really handy. So I've just got them dotted around for all kinds of things, how I want it. It took me ages to set that up, thanks to someone's video, which I'm gonna get onto soon. Uh, it's got in-body stabilization on the sensor, which is really handy as well. So I've shot down to 20th of a second handheld, razor sharp, so that's handy. It's not a game changer for me. At weddings, I like shoot at high, I have a minimum 250th of a second anyway um, to capture movement, so that's handy. And also the video on this thing, I haven't even tried that yet, but it's pretty good for video. It's 8-bit, but you know, the, the face tracking, the focusing and that for video, and it's full frame. The video will be very handy which I've got to learn about so they're the main things the three main ones is the seeing the exposure the eye it the EVF in bright conditions 
and that ridiculous eye autofocus, absolutely insane. Now, a video that helped me massively set this camera up, because it is complicated, is a YouTuber called Chris Turner um, from New Zealand. Uh, he did, I'm gonna link it below, he did a video on how he set up the Sony. So some of the stuff I kind of knew already, the settings that I wanted, but there's loads of functions in the Sony. I didn't even know what they were, but he goes through every single one and explains them and he's like, oh, that's handy, I'm gonna turn it off. Like the electric front curtain, I didn't know about that. So thank you very much to him, and I'm gonna drop that link below. So if you go over to Sony, watch that video of how to set it up. Also, I'll put one as well about the different focusing systems and the focus zones on the Sony, because they're crazy, there's so many. And that was really, really handy as well. So uh, big up to Chris Turner, and he's one of the reasons that I did switch over to Sony, I think, definitely. Um, so yeah, I'm more than happy with the camera. The image quality, um, I wanted it to match the Nikon D750. So 24 megapixel, two memory cards, obviously. That's nothing to do with image quality. Uh, really good ISO, really good dynamic range. And this matches it, and I think more than matches it. I would say it's even better, actually. The ISO, for me, seems to be a bit cleaner at like 12,000, 16,000. I've even shot this at 20,000 ISO, not at the wedding, but just practicing, and added a little bit of noise reduction, and they are more than usable, especially for like documentary stuff where nobody really cares about a little bit of grain or noise, but yeah. <laughs> and the fact that you can see the exposure and get it perfectly right, so it's not over or underexposed for whatever kind of shot you want, if you want to keep the ambient. The ISO is really good, the dynamic range, insane, probably a little bit better than the Nikon D750, and that was, they are monsters when it comes to dynamic range. So the D750s now you can get for an absolute bargain. Um, and they are, you know, image quality wise, there's not much in it compared to this. Um, but <laughs> the bells and whistles that go with this, incredible. Now I've got the Tamron lens. How did it do? 28 to 75, you could shoot everything with this. By the way, it's got it marked sort of 28, 35, 50, 75. So you can sort of see what sort of look you're after. Um, autofocus, fantastic on this. Full day wedding, bright sunny conditions, shadows, indoor, getting low light, no problem with autofocusing. Quiet, fast, quick, light, comfortable. Image quality, fantastic. It's not as good as the G Master apparently, but it's a hell of a lot lighter and a hell of a lot cheaper, sorry, as well. Um, F2.8, the central subjects, absolutely fine. Maybe the corners are a little bit, but for wedding photography, I'm not doing like high-end landscape photography where everything's got to be clearly in focus um sharp uh f4 and upwards crazy sharp really really sharp <laughs> so, um no problem with that i would use this for landscape products portrait everything so really good lens it is a cheaper option but the main reason i went to tamron is i can get my fingers in there whereas the g master i couldn't um yeah so the tamron lens really really happy with i'm going to get the other tamron lenses especially the one to replace this when I got some more weddings coming up. This is too heavy, but I do love the images from it. I like the compression you can get from it and the isolation. So the Tamron I've released, released the 70 to 180 f2.8, which is half the size of this. So yeah, be looking at that. Plus the wide one as well, the 17 to 28 f2.8. And they're all a 67 mil thread as well. So I've got a polarizer and ND filters that already fit this, so that'll be handy. So, um, did I say about Chris Turner? Yeah, I'm gonna drop his link below, I think I did. Watch his videos if you switch over to Sony. So I am overjoyed with what this thing did at a wedding. Absolutely, image quality, fantastic. That's all the clients care about, but the ease of use, what, <laughs> what it did, um, just found the whole experience. Once you get used to it, a heck of a lot easier than using a DSLR, I really, really did take some getting used to it. i literally practiced for a week with all the different buttons and everything and getting the feel for it too hence the uh, thing at the bottom because i just found it too small but um yeah i love it so if you're thinking if you're still thinking of going over to mirrorless over dslr for things like weddings even though it's like quite late in the game for all that now but um as long as the autofocus is reliable and you can trust it because <coughs> at weddings you need fast autofocus not gonna beat around the bush of that. You need fast autofocus. It's all very well having that lovely uh, mirrorless capability of seeing the exposure and all that before. So if you're doing product or landscape or portrait, 
then fine. But if you're doing quick fire stuff in all kinds of crazy lighting conditions, you need trustworthy autofocus. So if your mirrorless system can do that, fantastic. But the Sony certainly can. Um, and this is the entry level full frame Sony, the, A the A3. And like, what the others are like, I dread to think, because it just blew me away. So I hope this helps and um, thank you very much.